So then I had someone ask me to define masculinity and manhood. What is biblical masculinity? Well, I think it's servantship, selflessness. First and foremost, it starts in your home. I try to open my wife's door in the car every every time we are in a car together. I just love the way the Bible puts it. There's no greater mission field than your one that you have at home. The greatest inheritance we can have is to find a way to help our children find their way to heaven. You know, and I've had to wear this one, you know, because I've walked through two divorces. Um, and I have a daughter, uh, 38, that saw, you know, saw one of them. And that's not the way God intended it. I'd be the first one to tell you that if I was the man I am now, I would have a better chance either one of those relationships might have worked out differently. If my actions would have been more Christ-like throughout the process, who knows what would have happened with my ex-wives. And hopefully now with Carla, we've grown to a part where we're best friends. I can remember a time in my life, if my other significant other would have grabbed my phone and started scrolling through it, I would have thrown up in my own mouth. And now there's times I throw my wife my phone. There's, there, I, don't, I don't have two. I'm not going to have two phones. I'm not going to have two iPads. Everything's wide open. She's got all my codes. I mean, you wrote a book called Man Code. The transparency that needs to be put in place, I think that's masculine. Uh, to be vulnerable and authentic, I think that's masculine. You're touching on strength, kindness or grace and forgiveness, and knowing when to use strength and when not to. And that's kind of a foundation of biblical masculinity or, or manhood. We're born into a process of learning as men. So masculinity and manhood is looking at Jesus in the Bible. What do I do with strength when the time's right? And what do I do? What do I not do with strength? Your lab is a Major League Baseball clubhouse. That is an abnormal atmosphere for masculinity and manhood. There was a word that I you know, you stumbled into because the more I dug in the Bible, the word kept showing up. It was meekness. And when I finally understood what meekness meant, for years I thought that meant, well, oh, geez, okay, he's he could be fragile. You know, he's maybe a little soft in some areas, um, maybe non-confrontational, where meekness is just the opposite of that. It, it's strength personified, but in a calm, in a calm manner, uh, you, know, you know, dripping with humility. 